very exciting day yesterday in the NFL. Listen, I moved out to California seven years ago, and I've gotten a little philosophical. Uh, you know, I don't know if it's all the avocado toast that I've had, which is not a lot. But, you know, quarterbacks, they're in a weird spot right now, especially this gentleman by the name of Aaron Rodgers. Um, Aaron Rodgers, of course, had a ugly ending, shall we call it, in Green Bay. And he's now with the New York football Jets. And the Jets are going to be on hard knock shortly. And Aaron Rodgers took to the podium yesterday and said some stuff. Now, listen, I know he said some stuff in his career that's a little wacky and out there. He looked as reserved and calm and mature and smart as I've ever heard him. I do want to drill down just a little bit on what he was saying about growth uh, and maturity. I... uh you know, I've gotten a lot into the destination versus the journey discussion. I know a lot of you have, and you've given it thought, like, when you're in your 20s, it's all about the destination, right? Oh, I got to meet a girl, get married. I got to have kids. I got to have a great career. Like, it's all about the destination in your 20s. And then you get to your 30s, and you start hitting those destinations, and you're like, wait a minute. Oh, things are going to evolve. Not only do I want to have kids, but they got to have morals and ethics. They got to be smart. For me, they got to play sports. Uh, you know, like... The, the destination is constantly evolving. So for me, I'm a big journey guy. I've gotten into the journey. And I've watched this Aaron Rodgers journey in his career. Um, in his career, I would assume he started out wanting to win a Super Bowl, just like any young kid who plays football, right? You're a high school kid. Well, I got to be a quarterback and win the Super Bowl. You go to Juco. Man, I can't wait to win a Super Bowl. Get to the NFL. You sit behind Favre. And then he accomplishes some of these goals, right? You win a Super Bowl, a couple MVP awards. But what happened last year in Green Bay, the wheels kind of fell off. And it felt like the kind of climbing a mountain analogy. And he was near the top, right? Aaron Rodgers, I think last year, 38 years old. He can see the top. I'm close to the end. Let me go out with a bang. I got to two NFC title games. And all of a sudden, the path was blocked. Now, we can argue here who blocked the path. Was it LaFleur not calling great plays? Is he a genius? Probably not. Uh, was it the front office who kind of soured on Aaron? Was it Aaron who kind of blocked the path to the mountaintop himself? Remember, Aaron Rodgers got a little prickly at the end. Did not love how they lost Devontae Adams. Did not really want to gel with the young guys. His path to the top was blocked. So at that point, you got a couple decisions, right? I could retire. I could just bail. It's over. I'm done. I'm shutting it down. I'm going to power down into retirement. Aaron Rodgers, that would have been good. But what he did was... Borderline incredible. When you're trying to get to a goal and you decide that pathway is blocked, think about work, life, sports, you got two options. You can retire, you can call it a day, or you can say, you know what, I'm going to totally go to the bottom of the mountain and start all over. I have decided I'm going to take a new path, completely come down to the bottom, start all over. And that's what Rodgers did. Shockingly, he said, I'm going to the Jets. And they haven't won anything. Why, why am I going there? Well, I got to mesh with young guys once again, young receivers. I got a coach who's never been a head coach before. Salah's on the hot seat. I got an owner who nobody likes in New York. I got a GM on the hot seat. He drafted Zach Wilson. He's been a bust. Why would Aaron Rodgers pick the Jets? And you start to listen to his answers about how he is having patience and growth, and you start to be like, wow, do, do I like Aaron Rodgers now? No, I'm, I'm partial because I'm a Jets fan. But I got to wonder if a lot of people out there aren't listening to him and thinking, man, this guy could build something special. He seems like a totally new person. We had Eric Mangini on the herd this week. And I know a lot of people want to pump the brakes. Hey, man, Buffalo Bills, they're going to win the division again. Look out for Miami. Keep an eye on Miami. And the Jets, well, I don't know. They got a new offensive coordinator. Can Rodgers really do it again in a new city? There's so much newness. Eric Mangini, former NFL head coach, had this to say. They could win 11. They, they should win 11. You've got, you've got Aaron Rodgers. You've got a ton of young talent. You lost a lot of close games last year. You're deep into the system defensively. You, you, this isn't, you, you, you've got an offense coordinator that's worked with this guy. You've got players that he knows and trusts. You've got a down New England. You've got an uncertain Miami Dolphins with, with whether or not Tua can be healthy. And Buffalo, you know, who knows where they're going to go in terms of quarterback play. Is it going to be a lead or is he going to take a step back? Yeah, expectations should be sky high. <laughs> kind of got to love that, no? I mean, the Jets have a new quarterback with a new focus, a new outlook on life. You got a team that's on the uptick. I mean, folks, they won seven games last year with arguably the worst set of quarterback play in the league. If you're a Jets fan, 
You know, I'll leave you with this. I think I saw it on a bumper sticker. Today, I, I got to look down on my notes because I actually forgot how good of a bumper sticker it was. Oh, yesterday is history. Tomorrow is a mystery. Today is a gift. That's why they call it the present. I feel like Aaron Rodgers is getting philosophical. Aaron Rodgers is geared up for a monster season with the New York Jets. Now, I want to pivot to a different quarterback also uh, who played in the NFC North last year. The outlook not as good for him. One Kirk Cousins, very milk toast quarterback, says all the right things, hard worker, nice guy, very aw shucksy nature to him. Um, but the media does not like Kirk Cousins. Fans do not like Kirk Cousins. He's only got one playoff win. Come on, the guy's overrated, average at best. Or so you think. Kirk Cousins is in this new Netflix show called Quarterback alongside Patrick Mahomes and Marcus Mariota. And the three were sitting down this week. Yes, they were in front of the media. And one of the media members asked Patrick Mahomes, who's the most underrated quarterback in the league? Here's what Patrick Mahomes had to say. I mean, if you look at Kirk over here, man, wins every year, puts up great stats, did it in Washington, did it in Minnesota. Talk to any other quarterbacks in the league, and they're going to say the same thing, that Kirk Cousins is the most underrated quarterback in the league. Now, I know that's going to, a lot of people are going to say, well, listen, man, he's saying that because he's sitting right next to Kirk Cousins, Jason. That's the incentive for him to say that. And yeah, I can buy that. And I saw the one playoff win, and he's made $200 million. He made a lot of money playing quarterback, one playoff win. But, folks, I did the homework. Are you ready for this? I'm going to rattle off just a couple other quarterbacks with one playoff win. Because Kirk Cousins, just, he's 33, 34 years old, one playoff win. Well, Lamar Jackson has one playoff win. Deshaun Watson has one playoff win. Jake Cutler has one playoff win. So Kirk's in decent, right, right? Those guys are not incredible. They're good. They're considered better than Kirk Cousins, but they're not like amazing all-time quarterbacks. They also have one playoff win. Guys like Mike Vick, two playoff wins. Dak Prescott, two. So what are we doing? Can, can we stop talking about quarterback wins? I know obviously wins and losses matter, but quarterback wins are not just an indictment of Kirk Cousins. It could be the coaching. Mike Zimmer laid a lot of eggs in his postseason career. Okay? Uh, the defense has never been good. The defense in Minnesota is going to be terrible this year. Like, can we stop with the quarterback wins? We're going to have a former NFL quarterback on the sofa uh, here in about 45 minutes. Couch, sofa, whatever, however you want to call it. Uh, he had four playoff wins. And I don't know how you guys regard Mark Sanchez. You know he's my guy, former Jets quarterback. But, like, quarterback wins, can we, ju can we just stop banging on Kirk Cousins for having one playoff win? Let's remember. Let's just, let's just remember. Patrick Mahomes is an outlier, okay? Patrick Mahomes, we've never seen anyone like this in league history this early have this much success. It just does not happen. So let's take it easy a little bit on Kirk Cousins. And our staff, you know, we're creative. We're smart. We like the stats. We decided to look into the last five seasons. How does Kirk Cousins rank? Is he average? Is he top of the league, bottom of the league? Oh, would you look at that? We went and cherry-picked a couple stats for you. Completion percentage, kind of important. Last five years, Kirk Cousins number one in the league. Passing yards, fifth. Passing touchdowns, fourth. Passer rating, fifth. Uh <clears throat> Maybe Kirk Cousins is a little underrated. I went to Pro Football Focus. Again, just one more data point. Pro Football Focus last year graded out Kirk Cousins as the seventh best quarterback in the league. The year before that, he was fourth. The year before that, 11th. The year before that, fifth. Kirk Cousins is on a bit of a five-year heater here. I'm not saying he's a top five quarterback in the league. I'm not saying he's total garbage, which a lot of people want to say, hey, you're sealing with Kirk Cousins, maybe a playoff win, maybe a wild card appearance, but you're not winning a Super Bowl with Kirk Cousins. Uh, that might be true. And I, I think there's an analogy to the Portland Trailblazers in the NBA. They had Damian Lillard and C.J. McCollum. Awesome backcourt. Every season, you could pencil them in for 44 to 52 wins. Solid. Going to sell tickets. They're going to make the playoffs. And then they're going to probably lose in the playoffs to Curry or LeBron or whoever. And that might be the world where Kirk Cousins is. But that doesn't mean he's not one of the most underrated quarterbacks in the league. Patrick Mahomes himself hyped him up. And by the way, Marcus Mariota was sitting on the panel. And Mariota could have easily said any of, you know, 20 other quarterback is underrated. Like, you could have said Daniel Jones from the Giants. Folks, come on. Daniel Jones, really? Um, Ryan Tannehill. I mean, I can rattle off a bunch of average to uh, below average quarterbacks that people want to lump Kirk Cousins in with. I'm just saying. I know people say the stats 
are kind of like a bikini. They show a lot, but they don't show everything. Yes, we cherry-picked a couple stats that show Kirk Cousins is legit. Those are not average stats. Those are above average. I would put him, for my money, top 11 quarterback in the league. In the top tier, 32 teams in the league. I say he's in the top third. That ain't average. And I'm sorry, to ladies and gentlemen, but I got to ride with Patrick Mahomes here in that Kirk Cousins is one of the better quarterbacks in the league and certainly the most underrated quarterback. Media has got to put some respect on Kirk's name. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.